I want to go out front now to John Sullivan, who was the U.S. ambassador to Russia under President Biden and former President Trump, and retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, who was the Army Commanding General for Europe and the Seventh Army. I appreciate both of you being with me so much. Ambassador Sullivan, I just want to start with you. You, you heard Will Ripley's reporting, and now we're learning Putin will not hold his end-of-year press conference, which is an annual thing he has done. He's also taken questions from uh, the Russian people uh, during that time. It is the first time since 2013 that he isn't going to do this. So in, in almost 10 years, uh, you know, we're just looking at a few of them on the screen here. It is an annual tradition. Ambassador, what is the significance of Putin skipping it this year? Well, thanks, Aaron. It's very good to be with you. I think it's a sign of concern about his domestic support. He'd rather wheel out Victor Boot and have Boot recite the script that he just, uh, we saw the video of him uh, speaking. If you think that those words were his words originally, um, you're, you're sadly mistaken. That's the Kremlin speaking through Boot. He's useful to them as a mouthpiece. Putin doesn't want to go out and spend hours before journalists, even state media, uh, and risk getting asked difficult and embarrassing questions. Right. Ambassador, there has been so much speculation about Putin's health. We've all seen it. Um, it's impossible to confirm it. It's why we don't talk about it a lot. But you've been in the room with him as recently as last year, more recently than pretty much anyone. So what, if any, changes do you see in him since then and over the time you knew him? When you look at all these reports and you see him out there, what do you see? Well, uh, thanks, Aaron. First of all, when I've been with him in person, he has looked the picture of health. And that's certainly the assessment. Uh, there, there is no assessment by the U.S. government that he is, has serious health problems. You've heard my former colleague, CIA Director Bill Burns, say the problem with Putin's health is that it's too good. What I've witnessed, however, yeah. in Moscow over the last, uh, since this, this so-called special military operation began, is that Putin does look stressed, puffy, overtired, uh, sort of the way I look now after having been through a war myself there behind enemy lines in Moscow. I get it. It's a lot of stress, and uh, I think that's what he's feeling. We don't believe, the United States doesn't believe, as, as Director Burns said, that he's, uh, he's got some serious medical issue that is going to take him out of the picture. No, no, certainly not. And the, But I do find it interesting what you're saying. You're not buying into any of those theories, and they're all out there. I don't want to repeat them all. But but you are, to you, it does seem fair that, that he does look tired and, and, I mean, the word puffy, because it does feel accurate. Some of those pictures absolutely. where people go into other theories, he seems puffy. It, absolutely. And, and uh, there are times when I think when his rhetoric sometimes gets ahead of him and where he wants to go, and I think that's a sign of, of fatigue. He, he really uh, wants to be a person who is in control, very carefully modulated. Uh, and there have been occasions when his rhetoric has gotten a little out in front. And I think that's just a sign of fatigue, which is understandable given the stress that the man is under with the catastrophic blunder he made by starting this, this war on the European continent. 